Alrighty, uh, so we're going to finish the desk up in today's videos. Um, and of course, as we start off, you know, I kind of want to open my scene up, right? Um, so we go File, and of course we go Set Project, so File, Set Project. And then of course we can find our project, which is Project 3, because it's the new one we just started this week. Uh, remember, you just select the folder for the project and hit Set. Now, the nice thing is you don't have to keep creating new projects if you're just working on one single project, even if it's multiple scenes, right? Um, so remember, Project 3 is, of course, the desk and the clock radio. So we have two, just like in our previous two projects, we have two models we're building for the project. Um, so we don't have to create a new project every <laughs> every video. But we do want to, of course, set project, right? Um, that makes it so that it's active. Uh, like when we go to File, Open Scene, it goes right to Project 3 Scenes, right? Um, and then, of course, if I was to go back out, we go to Source Images, and that's where um, any of our reference images uh, would be at. In this case, it's not looking for um, those kinds of things. It's looking for Maya scenes, right? So if we go all files, we can actually see it there. Um, in this case, we'll go back up, of course. Um, go back to scenes. Uh, there's your autosave folder, right? If you have autosave turned on um, and stuff like that, by default, it's set to projects. So your autosaves will actually be in your projects also. Uh, so we'll go to scenes. There's our scene. Open it. And uh, of course, we don't save because uh, we're opening a scene. And there is our desk. And of course, it knows where to find reference pictures, right? So that's one of the great things about projects. Um, obviously, if you're working on your own computer and you never move to different computers, you probably don't have to worry about it so much because every, if every, as long as everything's staying put, it'll know where to find it. But projects can be really cool, like I said, we've said multiple times in these videos. Projects can be great when you have to move to different computers, right? Where um, when you kind of move those files there, they'll be in a different place than they were on the original directories. Um, projects kind of allow that to work in kind of um, uh, take care of itself, right? It kind of knows that this project is self-contained and it knows to find all those images in it. All right. Uh, so in this case, really what we need to do is we need to uh, kind of really make this side, right? Because we've already got um, this side will be easy to mirror over once we're done. Um, so yeah, um, remember yours don't have to be symmetrical, right? Um, obviously if they are, it makes it a little easier to mirror stuff over. And what we did need to do is make drawers, right? We need to make some drawers now. Uh, remember, we did make sure, and this was in the previous video, to kind of put edge loops in to kind of create these borders, right? Remember, in our reference images, we want some borders like these um, so we can really build it properly to avoid the six star here. Remember, that was in the last video. So now what we need to do, uh, need to do is make drawers. Now, the drawers we've done before, right? Just like basically most of this desk we've done on our um, end table. We just explored how to avoid a six star and how we could build edge loops. And in fact, if you remember back to the end table, we built our structure for the end table just like this also, right? And I kind of said, go with me. Uh, I'll explain it in the later project. Well, this is the later project, right? Um, and we could see that when we have two drawers or two uh, drawers that are going to come out, um, and if you do it a certain way, it'll create a six star. And that's why we built the structure like this. So we avoid that six star and the issues that can come up with that. Um, um, so really, we're just going to do most of the stuff we've already done before, right? Um, so I uh, remember you can always make your drawers as separate objects if you want to. And now that you know you have snap vertex as a precision snapping tool, you could technically, you know, make a drawer, bring it in here, and then just use that snap tool to kind of align everything. But that does take time. It's honestly a little bit faster and easier just to copy off of the kind of uh, drawer structure you already have than uh, snap align, uh, right? And it gives us great practice with that stuff. Uh, so remember, I'm going to, you know, uh, click on the uh, cabinet. In this case, we can do our isolate select, right? Um, just so we don't have to worry about everything else for the moment. So remember, that's just that guy right there. Isolate select, that's a toggle. Uh, and what we can do is we can hold down right mouse button. Uh, so remember, you hold down right mouse button over whatever you have selected. In this case, the cabinets. And we go to face mode, right? So we move to face mode. And remember, we can actually, of course, drag select all these faces in here, right? If I hold down tab, right, I can just kind of drag select those. Uh, remember, you don't have to hold down Shift. Uh, tab already has kind of add and subtract on. You'll see kind of when you move your cursor over, the plus and minus changes, right? Plus adds, minus subtracts. But of course, Shift and Control can subtract and add as well. And you notice it doesn't do anything on the back because uh, drag by default, right? When you hold down Tab, has camera-based selection on, so it won't grab anything the camera doesn't see. Um, pick marquee by default has it off, so kind of when you, whatever your box touches, it selects all of that. Uh, so remember, holding down Tab gives you drag select. Uh, you have to hold it down though. Um, and, but you can also turn it on and leave it on too. And it just lets you just hold down left mouse button and move your cursor. It's kind of a nice little fast way to do multiple sele precise selections without selecting everything. So just kind of remember that. 
Uh, but in this case, we can always just you know click on that one in the back and then shift left click on this one. And remember, we have this, and I've kind of talked about it before, shown it in some other videos. Uh, a couple of you guys did some one-on-ones and um, showed you there again, and it was actually on our quiz, right? Quiz one. Uh, remember, in the select menu, you have grow and shrink, right? Grow and shrink, and you can see that they're actually the brackets, uh, which is shift period and shift comma, right? And remember, grow selection takes whatever you've selected and it expands that selection to everything it's touching. It grows it out, expands it. Uh, of course, you'll see there's shrink, and shrink does the opposite, right? And there are quick keys for that. So we can grow and shrink. So you can see that's actually a pretty fast way to do that instead of drag selecting that stuff. But drag select is great. You know, just you have multiple selection tools. And once we've got all this selected, we of course go to edit mesh and duplicate, right? And we've seen this before, and we've actually seen a little bit of extract, right? We saw extract for our door on our room. We're actually gonna see extract again when we do some stuff in our office chair. Um, I think even maybe our clock radio will see it a little bit as well. Uh, but remember, you can also just edit mesh duplicate. Now, edit mesh duplicate is different than edit duplicate, right? The edit duplicate stuff is for objects, right? This only works on the object level stuff. Edit mesh duplicate is for copying or duplicating specific polygons, right? So if you want to duplicate a whole object, uh, edit duplicate. Uh, if you're looking to just uh, duplicate just some specific faces, like just these drawer cabinet inside stuff, then edit mesh duplicate, right? And what it does is it copies those off. Now you'll notice we get kind of that super manipulator that you'll sometimes see, right? For um, your ability to move along normal direction and all that stuff. You also notice we have a white and a green wireframe. That is supposed to happen. Uh, when you see this, don't go, oh, I did something wrong. Nope, this is exactly the way this tool is supposed to work. Uh, one, it's giving you the ability to move along normal directions for your stuff if you need to, right? Or if you do green or do weird stuff, right? So usually the blue arrow is what you want to move when you want to do that stuff. Um, but in this case, you'll notice it's selecting multiple objects, right? So if we just hit Q, remember Q will kind of turn off that edit mesh duplicate and it goes back to your regular selection tool. So Q on your keyboard is your regular selection tool. Just like alt left mouse button is rotate camera, alt middle mouse button is move camera. Remember, that's just your scroll wheel. Most of you probably do have a three, uh, three, uh, three button mouse and it's just that the scroll wheel can act like your middle mouse button. And then of course, alt right mouse button is zoom. Yes, scroll wheel does zoom, but it's jumpy. So remember, alt and your mouse buttons, alt left, alt middle, alt right are your navigation. Um, just like Q, W, E, R are your selection, move, rotate scales. And selection is kind of harmless because it's just selecting tools. So it's a, Q is a great way to kind of turn off whatever tool you're in and just go back to your normal selection tool. In this case, uh, you'll see we're kind of still in face mode. So even though it looks like we're in object mode, sometimes Maya is in a fuzzy state. So if you hold down your right mouse button, right, we can go to object mode. Now remember, your selection tools are here but it is actually a lot faster and easier to get it from here than it is to go all the way over here. Uh, there are quick keys, that can be a pretty fast way also, um, but you'll find a lot of your later teachers really prefer you to use this method, right? Uh, and it is actually a great method. Um, I'm just trying to get you guys in that habit. Uh, so now we're definitely in object mode though. Uh, and then of course we can hold down control, because remember control subtracts. You see how your cursor has a little minus next to it? And we can just click on the cabinetry and see how it just deselects the cabinet, leaving the inner drawer selected. So that'll give you an easy way to kind of duplicate your drawers and then deselect kind of the outer one, right? So you just hold down control and select on the outer cabinet so that only these inner ones are selected. Uh, in this case, it'll be easier to work with these two by combining them. So I'll just hit combine and make them one object, right? Um, let's combine, separate, since they're actually not bridged together at all, um, separate would actually separate them. The moment if I was to kind of bridge these two edges together and make these uh, meshes and polygons fully continuous, um, separate won't work anymore. You'd have to actually select the specific faces and extract. So you can still break them apart. You just have to actually select faces and extract those instead of separate. But separate can work on combined objects where you haven't actually truly joined or bridged or merged vertices or edges or stuff together. Um, it just makes it easier to work with these if they're already one object. Uh, so of course isolate select can be turned off and then turned on again right because then only the drawers were selected so remember at that point you know and if you ha if you accidentally deselect right watch so yeah i deselected it click and oftentimes it'll let you select those but if it selects both or just that one remember you can always just kind of left click drag to kind of select both and then hold down control to deselect that one all right 
Uh, of course, that was an object mode. And then isolate select, right? Great little isolate select. Remember, you do have your actual ability to hide selections, show selections, show last hidden. Um, if you're going to hide specific faces, you don't want to show all. You'll want to show all components. Um, but you can hide those things, right? Uh, so this is a quick reminder just to show that, right? I can go to faces, and I can go to display, hide, selection. You see how it hides those? And then, of course, we can go back to display, show, show all components, right? Not all. Show all will actually unhide the viewport gizmos, and you'll see these green, um, almost like image planes, but they're not. They're actually the uh, um, visual representations of the other viewports in here. So showing all is actually not a good idea. Um, it's better to show selection or show all components. You see that kind of unhides those faces again. So remember, you do have uh, normal hide and show functionality. Um, and of course, if used in conjunction with Outliner, like your objects can be hidden, right? I can go to object mode and I can always go to display, hide selection, and see that object's hidden. And of course, I could select it, display, show selection, right? Uh, so remember, your Outliner's got all that stuff, right? If you right-click on the word Outliner, you can close tab to close it up if you don't want it there. Uh, but I figured, you know, we're kind of talking about Outliners again, or the um, Isolate Select again, and I just want to make sure you guys saw that, or I reminded you guys again, because we have talked about this, but I want to remind you guys again, you can hide and show sp stuff specifically. Uh, it's just that Isolate Select kind of ends up being a pretty fast, easy way to often work with this stuff. So I do, what I'm in my, I tend to rely on Isolate Select a little bit more. But remember, you do have technically hide and show, and uh, some decent functionality for that stuff. Just remember, usually show all, show all is not a good one. It's better to show selection, show last hidden, or show all components. Uh, hide doesn't really matter. <laughs> so, uh, of course, F for frame selection, right? That'll can kind of set our, our camera to center this, um, zoom in on it, but also center the camera rotation around it. And all we really need to finish these drawers off is fill in the fronts and delete the tops. So, uh, remember, we can go to hold down right one edge, and I can select that edge, and we go mesh fill hole. And then I could select one of these edges on this one because those poly there was never any polygon right there on the original drawers. So we go mesh fill hole, and there we go. And then of course we can hold down right mouse button over the object face. And then we can select these faces. Remember shift add. We can hit delete. And now we have technically our drawers. But remember you selected those faces inside the cabinets. We did our edit mesh duplicate. Um, then we made sure to kind of just select the drawers, do a combine to make them one object, and you can use your isolate select. Uh, now, of course, we want to thicken this, and if we just grab, say, a couple of faces and extrude, right, you'll notice it does a normal extrusion, not a proper thicken. So remember, to actually do a thicken, you want to be in object mode, or technically have all the faces selected, right? But that's also object mode. So hold down right mouse button. Remember, uh, you're having your cursor over the object is better because if you put it over a different object, in this case, we don't have to worry about that, but... Um, if you put over a different object, it'll actually turn on the selection type for that object. So it is best to have your cursor over what's selected. Uh, so we'll go hold down right mouse button, right? Uh, move our cursor to object mode. And then we can extrude. Now, remember, oftentimes moving along normal direction with extrusions is annoying and actually doesn't give you what you want. If it's multiple polygons, it'll kind of puff them out, make them much bigger. Because it's technically, if they're not uh, planar and coplanar, Right? Their, their normal directions are pointing in a bunch of different ways. Um, it'll actually um, uh, make them larger because they're kind of pulling away from each other. Right? Um, but in this case, for things like Thicken in particular, it's great. Right? Um, so we grab that blue arrow because that's your uh, local translate Z. So we just grab that blue arrow. He said it does a great job of doing the Thicken for this. Right? It does a great job of doing the Thicken for this. And now that's properly Thicken for our drawers. And of course, we want to go to edge mode, right? Hold down right mouse edge mode. And we can just select all of the edges, right? Just pick marquees on by default. Left click drag and make sure that box is big enough so that it selects all the edges. And then of course, we can bevel again. Now in this case, this bevel is remembering the last settings I used. So I had a pretty decent small fraction. Uh, maybe you'll do 0.25 just to make sure it's kind of a, an exact number. Uh, segments three, right? Because that gives us the uh, extra edge loops to do the rounding, right? If you wanted these to be inverted, which you probably wouldn't want on this, right? Depth negative one. And like I said before, we can even play around with different kind of uh, mid-rings in the corner if you want to sometimes. Oftentimes the default stuff will work great, um, but you can change this around a little bit if sometimes the 
corners aren't giving you exactly what you want. You can play around with these a little bit. Uh, but one by default is fine. Um, most of what we're doing this semester are really just fraction and segments are going to cover us. But depth kind of does its own neat stuff. And you do have a few other controls in here. All right. Uh, so of course we can hit Q to kind of turn that tool off, right? Q is your regular selection tool. Um, and then of course we can hold down right mouse button to go to object mode. And there is our drawers. And you'll notice that they function properly, right? They come out. Now, are we trying to kind of build all the railing and little wheels for this stuff for our projects? No. Um, that is the kind of thing that and maybe future projects when you do um, upper division modeling courses, you could do that, right? Um, I'm not trying to have you model every little part, every little bolt on these things. It's more understanding how to use a lot of these core tools to build good models, um, even if we're not building every little part for those models. Um, generally, your drawers are going to be inside. It's just a great way for me to test that you know how to copy polygons, thicken stuff, fill holes, right, and bevel. Um, but generally, if the drawers have to come out for an animation, you need them to be properly built drawers. All right, uh, so there we go. Uh, now at this point, um, what we want to do here is we want to do the beveling on the cabinet, right? Because now that the drawers are built and beveled, we can actually bevel this cabinet because we don't really need to do any other modeling on it, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn um, isolate select back on. There we go. So isolate selects back on. And this time around though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it a little easier on ourselves. We're gonna make this a little more efficient. We haven't really had to worry about this before, but in this case, there's a lot of extra edge loops we have here, right? And we don't actually really need all of those edge loops, right? So here's the thing. If you don't mind having end gods on the sides of your desks, if you're basically done modeling, you don't have to add any more edge loops and you just wanna bevel, but keep it a bit more efficient, um, we can selectively bevel edges and we can start to intentionally create some end gons. Um, so in this one, we can get a little more efficient, right? Earlier models, it was just like, hey, build it well, bevel it. In fact, leaving this and just beveling it and having extra edges is not making a bad model. In fact, your model is great. It just has a little more polygons than are absolutely necessary. Uh, and that's relative. Film can do a lot of polygons. Uh, games can even do a good amount of polygons nowadays, but games have to be more efficient because uh, it is running in real time. Um, so keep in mind that it depends, it depends on the kind of studio you're at. If you're in games versus film, um, even if it's film, if you're ILM versus like a smaller boutique studio, kind of a bit of different amount of resources, right, available. Um, but technically, if we just bevel this whole thing, uh, we'd still have a great mesh. Um, it'd be all quads, it'd look nice. Um, there'd just be probably an extra couple hundred triangles we don't need, right? It's like, if I was to just go edge mode and quickly just bevel all these, Right? See how we're at now 3,500 triangles? That's all I do. Um, so that is adding 1,500 triangles, right? Um, and remember that, if you go to display, heads up display, poly count, that's how I've checked that on, right? So that's what turns that on. So display, heads up display, poly count, right? You don't have to really worry about having this on, but that's where it's at. Display, heads up display, poly count. And it can tell you exactly how many polygons you have. Uh, how, how many of what's selected, right? So you see now there's 24 there selected. But it also gives us our total triangle count of uh, about 2,000 for this uh, cabinetry right now, right? So you see that's our actual, um, it's actually really our total of everything, right? So you see that's actually everything, not even just the cabinets. The cabinets are only about 108 triangles, right? Um, so keep that in mind, that's actually your total count. Um, and then you see by beveling all of these ones, right? Um, the triangle count just for this goes up by about 1,500, just like the total went up about 1,500. So we can do if we want to, right? And I would encourage you guys to do it just to get some practice with this on this model. Uh, I'm gonna hold down tab for drag select and I'm gonna get rid of the edges we don't need, right? So I'm gonna hit select those and I'm gonna hit delete, right? Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these other side ones and I'm gonna hit delete, there we go. And I'm even gonna select kind of these top ones right here, hit delete, and the bottom ones, all right, hit delete. Now that does leave us with a couple of edge loops here, right? Double left click, shift double left click, shift double left click. Remember shift adds, double left click selects edge loops. Now, if we just hit delete right now, remember that actually leaves those vertices behind, right? So be aware that we don't want these vertices hanging around, right? These are creating a bunch of unnecessary end gons. So whenever you delete an edge loop, right? Remember you wanna do edit mesh, delete edge vertex, control delete. 
That was actually one of the quick keys on our, our hotkeys quiz, right? Quiz one. So control delete will actually take those edge loops out and the vertices. So if it's an object, if it's a specific face, right? Or even like a, a vertex that's only connected to two edges, uh, regular delete is fine, right? Um, but when you wanna take multiple edges out that are connected at least in a partial edge loop or a full edge loop, control delete, right? So that way it takes the actual vertices out. Like even just with a single edge, if I hit delete, right? Those vertices stay behind. So remember it is edit mesh, delete edge vertex, control delete. And that'll actually take those vertices out uh, to make it more efficient. Now the nice thing is this is a quad on the back. Um, and we just have some n-gons here though. But this is creating n-gons, right? This looks like a quad, doesn't it? But you'll notice it's actually got a lot of vertices here, right? So you see these vertices right here make this an eight-sided polygon. So remember, it's not a quad because it looks like a rectangle. It's the number of vertices it has, right? If I was to hit three on this, that's not looking that great, right? You kind of really see it's kind of pulling or pinching weird. Uh, of course, we're not putting this in the smooth preview, so not too much of an issue for us. There we go. All right. Um, in this case, though, you'll notice I did leave um, these edges here uh, because we do want those to be here for the bevels to work better. So these guys we do leave um, because we want there to be um, enough for the bevel to work, right? And now what we can do is we can come in here and we can actually grab all of these edges, right? Um, and if we wanted to, like we don't even have to have all of them to bevel, right? Um, it really depends on what you want. Um, just to point this out, right? You can actually just bevel some edges. So remember, you can selectively bevel just the edges you want to bevel, right? So uh, keep that in mind uh, that you can bevel just the edges you want. In this case, since we took care of the edge loops earlier and we lose end gons, um, we can do these bevels. Now the nice thing is you see that those bevels actually are getting a little bit weird right there, right? So this is one of those things that is kind of a little bit tricky when you take out these edge loops, right? As it kind of creates that stuff again. So keep in mind that you might even want to wait till after or be more selective with what we're beveling, right? So uh, in this case, you know, I'm going to maybe select all of these. And then what I can do is I can come in here and I could say, hey, I'm going to kind of... Um, deselect these edges all right here, kind of the ones that go um, kind of right there, all right? So we can see, we can just kind of deselect these ones right here. There we go. And then when we bevel, see those bevels work a lot better. So keep that in mind is that we can make this a lot more efficient. Um, and we can actually select just very, very specific edges on our mesh. Now you'll notice that instead of adding 1500 triangles to this, this only added about 500, right? For video games, that can matter a lot. It's a thousand extra triangles. Um, ILM is not gonna care about a thousand extra triangles on a desk, right? Um, but video games would. Um, so you are saving a few hundred, you are saving about a thousand triangles roughly by uh, doing it this way, right? So uh, keep in mind that um, you can, of course, do this, right? And I would encourage you on this one to do it. And you see how it looks nice and the bevels are all working pretty well uh, and quite predictably, uh, but we still manage to make this a lot more efficient polygonally. You will see that there are a lot more n-gons on this. There's an n-gon here and here, right? So there's n-gons here. But you notice how when we keep things kind of planar and coplanar, um, n-gons don't matter as much. And it's the kind of thing if you needed to, you could always select those end gons and you could do things like mesh triangulate, right? So you can always, if you really need to, you can always turn those into triangles, right? Um, often times you're not though. So even though we really do work with quads most of the time on a lot of stuff, when you're doing things like desks, when you're doing things like buildings, you can start to get away with end gons a little more, right? Because you have a lot of flat rectangular boxy surfaces and you only really need to bevel the corners, right? So the idea of never being able to work with n-gons is one of those things that you, it's a good habit to have of trying to always work with quads, but if you need to be really, really efficient polygonally, um, and it's on something that's like a desk or a, a building, right? Where those uh, n-gons are gonna stay flat, right? You'll notice how they don't really behave unpredictably. They look pretty good. Um, so actual n-gons are okay to use in certain circumstances, right? 
um, just to think um, really boxy stuff, things that are super predictable. If it's if that end gon is going to stay flat, um, and then it's on like a desk or a table or a building, um, you're probably okay getting away with it. On a character creature, no. On a car or a spaceship that's got lots of curved forms, no. You've seen we've built most of us quads at this point because quads are generally um, your best friend, right? As in terms of polygons, but there are certain circumstances where end gons are okay. And you see that this really didn't make a better mesh. It doesn't look any better. It made a more polygonally efficient mesh, right? It's just more polygonally efficient. Um, if you don't need to be polygonally efficient because you're at ILM, don't worry about it. Just bevel the whole thing. It saves you a little bit of time. Everything's quads. You have a couple hundred extra triangles. If it's video games, you do want to actually uh, take that in consideration a lot more, right? Um, you really don't want to waste polygons if you don't need them in video games. So this would be a little more of a video game trick than um, for movies. But we notice we can take some edges out, leave some end gons, and we can even select just some of the edges we want to bevel and not all of them. And it's good to know that we can bevel just some edges, and even in certain cases like this, leave some end gons and still have it work pretty well. All right, uh, that'll be a great place to stop this video. So I'll save it really quick.